In this lesson, we're going to review inequalities, the number line, and interval notation. So we're going to start by just talking about the basic definition of an inequality. An inequality is a statement that two algebraic expressions are not equal in value. So generally when we're talking about an inequality, we're talking about a less than, a greater than, a less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to. So let's start out by talking about the less than. So when we look at a less than, you notice that the symbol is pointing to the left. Okay, it's pointing to the left. And this tells us that the number on the left is smaller or less than the number on the right. So if you wanted to write something like five is less than six, that would be a true statement. If you wanted to write three is less than seven, that would be a true statement. If you wanted to write negative 10, is less than, let's say, negative 1, that would also be a true statement. So the thing to remember here is that the smaller number is always going to have the symbol pointing towards it. Okay, So see how 5 is the smaller number and the symbol's pointing towards it. 3 is the smaller number, the symbol's pointing towards it. Negative 10 is the smaller number and the symbol, again, is pointing towards it. So even if you can't remember the difference between a less than and a greater than symbol, if you just remember that when we're dealing with inequalities, the symbol will always point to the smaller number, you're going to be good to go. All right, now the other symbol you deal with is known as a greater than. So this guy is going to point to the right. So kind of the open side here is facing the larger number. Okay, so the larger number is now going to be on the left. So if we had something like 17 is greater than, let's say, 4, okay, the larger number is on the left. If we had something like 3 is greater than negative 1, and let's just say we had something like negative 20 is greater than negative 50. So again, always, 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 the smaller number has the inequality symbol pointing towards it. So see this guy is pointing towards the 4, this guy is pointing towards the negative 1, and this guy is pointing towards the negative 50. And you can always tell, again, if you have a less than, the symbol points to the left. If you have a greater than, the symbol points to the right. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the difference between strict inequalities and non-strict inequalities. So a strict inequality is something that you just saw. So you saw strictly less than and strictly greater than. So if I said... 3 is less than 10, right? That's a strict inequality. But if I said something like 3 is less than or equal to, right, you have that little bar there underneath the inequality symbol, well, now I'm allowing myself the opportunity for inequality. So I could say 3 is less than or equal to 3, and this would be a true statement. Although the first part, 3 is less than 3, is false, 3 is equal to 3. So when you look at something like this, you basically have to ask yourself two questions to see if it's true. So you would first ask the question, is 3 less than 3? So the answer to that is no, right? So you can write no. But that's okay, you're not done. Only one of these needs to be true. The next question you ask yourself is 3 equal to 3? And that guy is yes. That guy is yes, so this is a true statement. This is true. So only one of those needs to evaluate to true. Now, if I said something like 3 is less than or equal to, let's say, 1, well, that wouldn't be true. Is 3 less than 1? No. Is 3 equal to 1? No. So both of those are no. So in this case, this guy is going to evaluate to false. Okay, so that would not be a true statement. Now, you also have a greater than or equal to, and basically it's the same principle. So if I had something like 6 is greater than, let's say, negative 1, this is true, of course. But I could also have something like 6 is greater than or equal to, let's say, 5. Is 6 greater than 5? Yes, it is. So you can stop there. That's a true statement. If I had 6 is greater than or equal to 6, well, first we'd say, is 6 greater than 6? No, it isn't, right? 6 and 6 are the same number. Then you'd ask the question, is 6 equal to 6? Yes, it is. So this is also a true statement, right? So this guy is true. 
So essentially when you have a non-strict inequality like less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you're allowing for the possibility of equality, right? It can be the strict part can be true or the equality can be true, you'll get a true statement. If you have a strict inequality like less than or greater than, well then it's gotta be strictly less than or strictly greater than to get a true statement. Well, another thing we need to talk about here is the concept of the number line. So we've looked at the number line a few times now and we wanna just refresh our memory on how the number line works. I want you to recall that numbers increase as we move to the right and decrease as we move to the left. So as we're moving this way, the values are increasing. So if you start at any point, so let's just say you start at the point negative three, as you move to the right, each number to the right of negative three is larger than negative three. So I can pick any number on the number line that's to the right of negative three, let's just say it's five, and I know, based on what I said, that five would be greater than negative three because five lies to the right of negative three on the number line. Similarly, if I chose two random points, let's say this is six and let's just say negative two. Well, six lies to the right of negative two. You could also say negative two lies to the left of six. So negative two is therefore a smaller number, right? If a number lies to the left of another number on the number line, it's a smaller number. So I can say negative two is less than six since negative two, again, lies to the left of six on the number line. So something you might see in your textbook in a review section, we would say for any three real numbers, A, B, and C. So again, when we say real numbers, we mean anything you can think of. So negatives, decimals, fractions, you know, square root, cube root, whatever you want. These three real numbers, you can say the following thing. So A is less than B if A lies to the left of B on the number line. A is greater than B if A lies to the right of B on the number line. And then lastly, A is greater than B and B is greater than C if here A needs to be to the right of B and C on the number line, right? It's gotta be to the right of both of them. B has to be to the right of C and to the left of A. And C has to be to the left of B and A, okay? Now, typically we would not write this situation like this. So let's just put a scenario on the board here. Let's just say we had something like six is greater than three and three is greater than, let's say one. Typically, the way you want to write this is in the order of the number line. So you would want to put one is less than three, which is less than six, because the number line goes like this, right? If you had a number line, Let's just say this is one, this is three, and this is six. This would be the way it's displayed, and this is how you wanna write it. You want the smallest number all the way to the left, just like it is on the number line, then the next smallest, just like it is on the number line, then you know your largest number, which in this case is six, and that's how it would be on the number line. So this is typically how we're going to write this. This is not wrong, but it's just not how we typically would do it. All right, let's take a look at a quick example. We want to replace each question mark with the correct inequality symbol. So we have four question mark two. So again, obviously we know that four is a larger number than two. If we had $4 in our wallet, we obviously have more money than if we had $2. But to prove this, we can look at our number line and say, okay, four lies to the right of two on the number line. So therefore four is greater than two. Again, the symbol's always gonna to point to the smaller number. So notice I used the greater than symbol there. The symbol's gonna to point to the right. It's pointing to that two, which is the smaller value. Now, you could technically also use a greater than or equal to here. This is still true because four is greater than two. It doesn't matter that four is not equal to two because only one of those needs to be correct. But we typically only use these when we're working with variables. Although this is technically correct, we wouldn't say this is a good answer. We'd say this is a more precise answer, right? Four is just greater than two. Now you could also flip this around and say, well, since two lies to the left of four on the number line, two is less than four, right? So two different ways to kind of display the same information. All right, what about negative seven question mark negative three? 
Now, this type of problem trips people up because negative 7 seems like or might seem like a bigger number to you, right? Because you're used to dealing with 7 being larger than 3. But what happens is a bigger negative is further to the left on the number line, and it actually represents a smaller number. If you look at negative 7 here, it is to the left of negative 3 on the number line. So by definition, it is smaller. So we can say that negative 7 is less than negative 3. Okay, and the way I always remember this is I think, okay, a bigger negative is a smaller number. Okay, and again, I can flip this around and I can say that negative 3 is greater than negative 7. Okay, so if you had something like, let's say, negative 50 and negative 200, who would be the relationship there? Negative 200 is a larger negative, and therefore it's a smaller number. So in this situation, we would say negative 50 is greater than negative 200, or we could say negative 200 is less than negative 50. All right, let's take a look at another example. So display the relationship between the numbers using inequality symbols. All right, so if we look at the numbers here, we have negative 11, we have 7, we have negative 5, and we have 1. So the smallest number here would be the biggest negative number. And so negative 11 is a larger negative than negative 5, right? It's further to the left on the number line. So negative 11 is going to be the smaller number, and so I'm going to list that first. And I'm going to say this is less than, my next negative is negative 5. And then if I look at the positive numbers, I know 1 is smaller than 7. So I'm going to put is less than 1 and then is less than 7. So this is, again, in the order of the number line. Negative 11 will be the furthest to the left, then negative 5, then 1, then finally 7. So negative 11 is less than negative 5, which is less than 1, which is less than 7. All right, so let's wrap up the lesson by talking about interval notation. So this is a very important way to kind of notate inequality relationships, and we'll see this a lot throughout our course. So if we had something like, let's say x is greater than 5. Of course, this way displays a lot of information. We know x is just any value larger than 5. But interval notation is another way to display this information. So typically with interval notation, you want to find a way to list the smallest number that x can take on. And you want to find a way to list the largest number, okay, the largest number that x can take on. So I want to just think about this for a second. Let's just stop and think about this. What is the smallest possible value that x can take on? It's not 5 because x is anything larger than 5. And in terms of the largest number, there is none, right? It would just go on for infinity. But to focus on the smallest number right now, if we think about that, what would I put here for the smallest number? Would it be accurate to put 5.1? Can I think of a number that's smaller than that that is larger than 5? Well, of course. I could put 5.01. And then I could put 5.001. I can keep doing this forever. I can keep getting closer and closer to 5 without actually touching it. And I can do that for infinity. I can just keep going. So to solve this problem, what we're going to do in interval notation is we're going to list the 5. We're just going to put that down. And we're going to put a parenthesis next to it to say 5 is not included. So this means not included. And so this tells me that x can be anything that is larger than this number 5. Okay, So 5 isn't the actual smallest number. The smallest number would be anything that's larger than that. Then we put a comma, and we list the largest number. Since x is anything that's larger than 5, technically x can go out to infinity, right? So we would just put the infinity symbol, and it looks like a sideways 8. And then we always use a parenthesis next to infinity, because infinity is not a number. It is just a concept, right? It just keeps going on forever and ever and ever. Now, let's think about this using a non-strict inequality. Let's say I had x is greater than or equal to 5. Well, now the 5 would need to be included, so I would need a different notation. 
instead of using a parenthesis, I would want to use a bracket, okay? This bracket tells me that the five is included in my solution. So the smallest number is actually five now, okay? So if I saw something like x is greater than or equal to, let's say negative one, I would put a bracket and a negative one there, okay? That's the only thing that would change. So very, very easy. The other scenario would be dealing with a less than. So let's say x is less than, let's say, 7. Well, this has to change itself up. Since x is less than 7, what is the largest number that x can take on? Well, it's any number that is smaller than 7. Again, I can play that game that I just played. I could list 7, then I could list 6.9999. I could keep going and going and going and get as close to 7 as I'd like. I can keep doing that forever and ever and ever. So again, to solve that problem, I just put seven and I put a parenthesis next to it to say, hey, seven is not included. Not included. And I'll put a comma. And for the smallest number, because X is anything less than seven, we go to the left, right, forever. So we would say this goes out to negative infinity. So we'll put a negative and then the infinity symbol and let me kind of scooch this down. And I'll put a parenthesis there. So we have from negative infinity out to and not including seven. Now, again, if I had a less than or equal to here, the only change I would make is instead of a parenthesis, I would just use a bracket, okay? So very, very easy to use interval notation. The other scenario you would run across is a three-part inequality. So let's say x was greater than 3 and less than 7. Well, 3 would not be included, and 7 would not be included, but it could be any value in between, right? So again, we'd list 3, we'd list 7, and we would just put a parenthesis next to each to say 3 is not included, 7 is not included, but any number in between would be. And again, if I change this to a non-strict inequality, these guys right here would just change to a bracket in each case. Okay, so very, very simple. All right, so let's look at x is greater than negative two. So how would I write this in interval notation? So I have a strict inequality here. So I know that negative two is going to be excluded, right? So anything larger than negative two works, but negative two itself does not work. So for my smallest value, I'll put negative two, and then I'll put a parenthesis next to that to say negative two is not included. Then comma, and then I'll have out to infinity. Always use a parenthesis with infinity. Now, one thing I wanna show you is how to graph this, and graphing it is the same notation as the interval notation. So what I would do is at negative two, let me kinda of change my marker up a little bit. So I'll go to 3.5. So at negative two, I would put a parenthesis there facing to the right. And I would just shade everything this way, including the arrow. So all this is telling me is that negative two is not included. That's what the parenthesis is telling me. I've shaded all this area going to the right, including the arrow to say, hey, every number works as a solution for X with the exception of negative two or anything to the left of that. But anything to the right of negative two works. Now, you might see in your textbook a different scenario. You might see them put an open circle here. Let me kind of change this marker a little bit down. So you might see them do this. That's perfectly valid. It's the same thing. It's just an open circle to say negative two is not included and they're shading everything to the right. This is perfectly acceptable as an answer and it's just another way to kind of notate the same thing. All right, what if we saw x is less than negative three? If we think about the largest number, I'm gonna put negative three there. It's a strict inequality, it's not included, so I put a parenthesis. And then over here for the smallest value, I'll put negative infinity. So you have a parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, negative three parenthesis, right? So anything smaller than negative three, negative three is not included, works as a solution for x. And again, graphically, we can show that by putting a parenthesis facing to the left at negative three and shading everything to the left. So negative three doesn't work, but anything to the left works. And again, if you want, you can do an open circle and shade everything to the left like that. All right, what about x is less than or equal to the number one? 
So let's start out with the graphical display here. And I would find one and I would put a bracket there facing to the left. So the bracket again tells me that one is included and I would just shade everything to the left. And again, you saw the open circle in the other scenario. Here, instead of the open circle, we would have a filled in circle, right? So it would look like that to say, hey, one is included, anything to the left is also included. All right, so in interval notation, we would have from negative infinity, always use a parenthesis with either negative infinity or infinity, up to and including the number one. So because we have the non-strict inequality here, one is included, so I'm gonna use a bracket. All right, so we have x is greater than or equal to seven. So graphically, if we look at seven, again, we can either put a bracket facing to the right and shade everything to the right, or we can put a filled in circle at seven and shade everything to the right. Again, either one is acceptable. When we look at the interval notation, we would put a bracket on the left, okay? And then put seven. So seven is included, seven is the smallest value that X can take on. And then comma, X can be anything going out to positive infinity. Again, we always use a parenthesis with infinity. So we have our bracket next to seven, showing that seven is included. And then comma, we have infinity, and then our parenthesis next to infinity. All right, for the last one, we see that X is greater than negative four and less than seven. So graphically, we would look at negative four, which is right here. We'd put a parenthesis there facing to the right to show again that negative four is not included. And we'd find seven, and we put a parenthesis facing to the left, again, to show that seven is not included. So X can basically be any value between negative four and seven where negative four and seven are not included. So we show that graphically that way. Again, if you wanted to, you could put an open circle here and an open circle there. Again, it means the same thing, right? So I'll stick to the parenthesis throughout this course. So I'm just gonna display it that way. But again, if your book shows you the open circle and you feel more comfortable with that, you're good to go with that method. All right, so interval notation here, we want to list a parenthesis, then a negative four, then comma, a seven, and then a parenthesis. 